were discussing about different flow visualization lines in our last class and we will discuss one more flow visualization line which is called as timeline. So, what is a timeline? If you have a snapshot at a particular time in the flow field where you mark nearby particles. So, nearby fluid particles which are located in, in the flow field at a given instant of time, if you somehow mark those particles by some way, then if you now get the snapshot at different times, it will give a picture of evolution of the flow field as a function of time and that is known as a timeline. So, it is nothing but uh, like a snapshot of nearby fluid particles uh, at a given instant of time that is called as a timeline. So, let us look into a small movie to see that uh, what we mean by a timeline. So, if you see now, this gives a snapshot at different instants of time of nearby fluid particles and in a way, it gives a sense of uh, the velocity profiles at different instants of time. You can see that in this example, the flow passage is narrowing and as the flow passage is narrowing, the fluid is moving faster to make sure that the mass flow rate is conserved. We will see later on that formally this is described by the continuity equation and in, in, in maybe a differential form or an integral form, but uh, at least this gives us a visual idea of what the timeline is all about. Now, with uh, this background on the flow visualization lines, we have now uh, understood that uh, how we can visualize the fluid flow in terms of some imaginary description uh, like through the streamline, streak line, path line or maybe the timeline. Next, we will go into the description of acceleration of fluid flow. So, we have discussed about the velocity, the next target is the acceleration. Let us say that uh, you have a fluid particle located at a position P at specifically the location P1 at time equal to t and how the velocity is described here, the velocity described is described here through a velocity vector v which is a function of R1 that is the position vector of the point P1 and the time t. This is nothing but the Eulerian description. If you write it in terms of components, you can write an equivalent scalar component description that you have u as a function of x, y, z and t, v as a function of x, y, z, t and w as a, another function of x, y, z, t. So, in we are trying to describe it in terms of Cartesian coordinates. It is not always necessary to do that, but it, it may be a simple way to demonstrate. Uh, one may use other coordinate systems as well. So, if you are using a Cartesian coordinate system, three independent coordinates, space coordinates plus time coordinates that uh, together give the velocity at a particular point. So, if the fluid particle is located at P1, uh, the velocity at that point is basically the velocity of a fluid particle located at that point and that is given by these components. Now, let us say that at a time of t plus delta t, these things get changed. Now, at a time t plus delta t, what happens? This fluid particle is no more located at this point. The fluid particle is located at a different point. So, let us say that the fluid particle is located at a point P2. So, at the point P2, now let us say that the velocity is whatever, uh, some arbitrary velocity. So, initially it may be velocity at the point 1, say V1, now it is V2, which is again a function of its local position and time. So, you have 
this v2 this one a function of what so let us say that it is given by the, its components u plus delta u v plus delta v w plus delta w these are functions of what these are functions of the new position vector the new position vector say is r1 plus delta r1 so in terms of scalar components it may be x plus delta x y plus delta y z plus delta z and the time has also now changed it has become t plus delta t so we are thinking about a small interval of time delta t over which the fluid particle has undergone some displacement which is a change in position vector having components delta x delta y and delta z that is what uh, we are trying to understand so we can clearly see that there is an original velocity in terms of its three components there is a change velocity in terms of its three components and if we want to find out the acceleration see the basic definition of acceleration is based on a lagrangian reference frame that is the rate of time rate of change of velocity in a lagrangian frame not in an eulerian frame the all the basic definitions in newtonian mechanics that we have learnt earlier are based on lagrangian mechanics so when you say that it's a rate of time rate of change of velocity then that has to deal with the time rate of change of velocity of maybe an identified fluid particle which earlier was at p1 now is at p2 so if we want to find out the change so you can write uh, of course you can write it in terms of the three different components but just for simplicity let us just write for the x component similar things will be there for y and z component so how can you write u plus delta u as a function of u so u plus delta u is now dependent on the local position of the particle and the time that has elapsed so it is a function of it depends on what it depends on the original u plus the change so what was the original u that was u plus see it is a function of four variables so you again it's the same mathematical problem that there is a function of four variables it is known at a given condition now you make a small change in each of these variables and you want to find out the new function again you can express it through a taylor series expansion now it is a function of multiple variables instead of a single variable so we will use the taylor series expansion you have to keep in mind that now you are having four variables so let us first consider the time variable maybe because it is a bit different in characteristic than the earlier one so this is with regard to the time then with regard to the space okay plus higher order terms this we have just written the first order term in the taylor series since it is a function of four variables you have four first order derivative terms similarly you will be getting second order derivative terms and so on but we will neglect the higher order terms by by considering that these delta x delta y delta z and delta t are very small so we have to keep in mind that all these are tending to zero and because all they are tending to zero uh, we are neglecting their higher order so you can first thing what you can do you can cancel u from both sides and what is the definition of acceleration along x for from a particle mechanics view point or a lagrangian view point so you have to find out the change in velocity x component of velocity because we are writing acceleration along x divided by the time delta t in the limit as delta t tends to zero 
very simple straightforward Lagrangian description. So, when you do that basically what we are doing we are dividing the left hand side by delta t. So, right hand side is also divided by delta t and the limit is taken as delta t tends to 0. So, the first term is straightforward. Let us look into the next terms. So, first we will evaluate the limit, limit as delta t tends to 0, delta x divided by delta t that multiplied by the derivative with respect to x. Similarly, the other terms let us just complete it. So, what we are doing is we are trying to find out that because of the changes in velocity component along different directions, uh, what is the net effect in acceleration and these terms are basically representatives of that. We will formally see that how they represent such a situation. So, uh, now let us concentrate on these limiting terms, say the first limiting term. What it is representing? It is representing the time rate of change of displacement along x of the fluid particle over the period delta t. Now, you have to keep in mind that we are thinking about a limit as delta t tends to 0. This is a very important thing. What is the significance of this limit as delta t tends to 0? When delta t tends to 0, p1 and p2 are almost coincident, right? That means, let us say that p1, p2 all those converge to some point p and that point is a point at which say we are focusing our attention to find out what is the change of velocity that is taking place. So, when in the limit delta t tends to 0 we are considering the Eulerian and Lagrangian descriptions merge. This is very, very important. So, uh, we are trying to see what is our motivation. We know something and we are trying to express something in terms of what we know. What we know? We know the straightforward Lagrangian description of acceleration. We are trying to extrapolate that with respect to an Eulerian frame. To do that, we must have an Eulerian Lagrangian transformation and essentially we are trying to achieve that transformation in a very simple way that as the delta t tends to 0, Eulerian and Lagrangian descriptions should coincide. And then what does it represent? It represents the instantaneous velocity, x component of the instantaneous velocity of the fluid particle located at p. That means, it represents the x component of the fluid particle located at p. Since you are focusing on attention on p itself, and the velocity of the fluid particle if it is neutrally buoyant is same as the velocity of flow. We can write that this is same as what? This is same as u at the point p. See writing this as u is, is very straightforward. Understanding it, it conceptually is not that trivial and straightforward. If the Eulerian and Lagrangian descriptions did not merge, we could not have been able to write this because this is on the basis of a Lagrangian description and this is the Eulerian velocity field. How these two can be same? They can be same only when we are considering a particular case when in the limit as delta t tends to 0. So, wherever we are focusing our attention at that particular point, this represents the velocity of the fluid particle. If the fluid particle is neutrally buoyant with the flow, then it is like an inert stressor particle moving with the flow and then it would have the same velocity as that of the flow at that point at that point at that instant. However, if the fluid particle has a different density than that of the flow, then this would be u of the fluid particle. So, fundamentally this is u of the fluid particle, not u of the flow field. If it is neutrally buoyant, then it becomes same as u of the flow field. If it is an inert stressor particle in the flow, which is the definition of the fluid particle, then it is definitely same as u at that point. But if it is a fluid, if it is a particle of a different uh, 
characteristic different density characteristic than that of the flow it, it may be different from that of the velocity field at that point. So, that we have to keep in mind. So, if, if you complete this description of this term what you will get? You will get A x is equal to that is the straightforward follow up of this expression because the other limits you can express in terms of V and W. Again with the same understanding as we express uh, as we use for expressing the first term. Now if you clearly look into this acceleration expression, there are two different types of terms. One is this type of term which gives the time derivative, another gives the spatial derivative. You will see that this expression will give you a first demarcating look of how the expression is different uh, in terms of what we express in a Lagrangian mechanics. In the Lagrangian mechanics, it is just the time derivative that comes into the picture. Here you also have a positional derivative and what do these terms represent? We will give a formal name to these terms, but before that first let us understand that what these two terms represent. Say you are located at a point 1, now you go to a point 2 in the flow field. So, when you go there, there are two ways by which your velocity gets changed. How? One is maybe from 1 to 2 when you go, you have a change in time and because of a change and you also have a change in position, you have a change in velocity uh, and that is a solely time dependent phenomenon. How can you understand what is the component of the time dependent phenomenon? If you did not move to 2, but say you confine yourself to 1, say you are not moving with the flow field, you are confining yourself with 1, then you are freezing your position. But still at the point 1, there may be a change in velocity because of change in time, it, if it is an unsteady flow field. So, because of that it might be having an acceleration. So, the acceleration that acceleration component is because of what the time rate of change of velocity at a given point at a given location. So, that is reflected by this one, but by that time when you are making the analysis the fluid particle might have gone to a different point. Even if its local velocity that is velocity at a point is not changing with time it has gone to a different point, there it encounters a different velocity field. So, here it was encountering a particular velocity field because of its change in position. So, what it has done? It has got advected with the flow, it has moved with the flow and it has come to a new location where it is encountering a different u v w. So, because of the change in u v w with a change in position, it might be having a an acceleration. So, that acceleration is not directly because of the time rate of change of velocity at a given point, but because of the spatial change since the particle, the fluid particle by that time has traversed to a different location where it finds a different flow field. And, and since uh, we are considering that it is an inner tracer particle, it has to have the same velocity locally as that is there in the new position. So, because so the next combination of terms, it represents the change in velocity solely due to change in position. So, the total the net change is because of two things, one is if you keep position fixed and you just change time because of unsteadiness in the flow field there may be an acceleration. The other part is even if the flow field is steady, but you go to a different point because of non uniformity, because of a change in velocity due to change in position the fluid particle might have a change in velocity. So, the change in velocity in the fluid particle may be because of two reasons. One is because of the change in velocity due to change in time even if it were located at the same position as that of the original one and the other one is not because of change in time, but because of change in position as it has gone to a different position because of non-uniformity in the flow field, it could encounter a different velocity and the resultant acceleration is a combination of these two. So, let us let us take a very simple example to understand it. Say you are uh, you are travelling by flight from Calcutta to Bombay. 
So, uh, when you are taking the flight, before taking the flight, you see that it is raining very, very heavily. And uh, then, say you take two, two and a half hours, you reach Bombay and you find that it is a very sunny weather. So, the question is, now if you, if you want to ask yourself a question, does it mean that when you, when you departed from Calcutta, it was raining in Bombay or when you departed from Calcutta, it was sunny at Bombay or when you have reached Bombay, is, is it still raining at Calcutta or is it still, is it sunny at Calcutta? It is not possible to give an answer to any one of these because the net effect that you have seen is a combination of two things. You have traversed with respect to time. So, you have elapsed certain time by which maybe it was raining at Calcutta, but right now it is not raining at Calcutta. Maybe it was sunny at Calcutta and right now it has started raining. So, it is like at a particular location, the weather has changed because of change in time. But the other effect is that you have migrated to a different location and because of the change in location, maybe it was before two years raining at Bombay, now it is sunny or it might so happen that it was sunny two hours back in Bombay, still it is sunny. So, you can see that individual effects you can maybe try to isolate, but what is the net combination of changing with respect to position and time, that is the net effect of this and it might not be possible to isolate these effects. So, when you think about the total acceleration, so it is just like a total change. So, when you have the total change, it is a change because of position and because of time and that is why this A x or maybe A y or A z, this is called as the total derivative of velocity. So, it is given a special symbol capital D d t. So, capital D d t has a special meaning, it is uh, called as total derivative. It is to emphasize that it is a resultant change because of change in position and change in time. So, with respect to change in time, if you have a change, then it is called as a temporal component of acceleration. Temporal stands for time, temporal or transient or local. So, these are certain names which are given. Again, by the name local, it is clear local means confined to a particular position only with respect to change in time. And this is known as the convective component. So, convective component is because of the change in position from one point to the other and this therefore is the total or sometimes known as substantial. So, the total derivative is a very important concept mathematically, here we are trying to understand this concept physically, but it is not just restricted to the concept of acceleration of fluid flow, it is uh, applicable in any context. In any context where you are having an Eulerian type of description and it is therefore possible to write the general form of the total derivative as this way. where it has a local component and a convective, convective component. So, we can uh, try to answer some interesting and simple questions and see uh, and get a feel of uh, the difference of this with again the Lagrangian mechanics. So, if we ask a question, is it possible that there is an acceleration of flow in, an, in a steady flow field, that the flow field is steady, but there is an acceleration. It is very much possible because if it is steady, only the first term will be 0, but the, but if the velocity components change with position, then the remaining terms may not be 0. So, this is a like these are certain contradictions that you will first face when you compare it with Lagrangian mechanics. In Lagrangian mechanics, if there is something which does not change with time, its time derivative is obviously 0, but here even if it does not change with time, the total derivative is 
it, it may not be 0. On the other hand, it may be possible that it is changing with time at a given location, but acceleration is 0. Because I mean in a, in a very hypothetical case, it may so happen that the local component of acceleration say it is 10 meter per second square, convective component is minus 10 meter per second square. So, the sum of that two is 0, but individually each are not 0. That means it is possible to have a time dependent velocity field, but 0 acceleration and it is possible to have a non-zero acceleration even if you have a time independent velocity field. So, these are certain contrasting observations from the straightforward Lagrangian description. So, you can write the x component of acceleration in this way and I believe it will be possible for you to write the y and z components which are very straightforward and uh, you have to keep in mind that when you write y component this ddt operator will act on z and when you write the z component it will act on w. So, you can write the individual components of acceleration vector and the vector sum will give the resultant acceleration. Now, you can write these terms in a somewhat uh, in a somewhat compact form. So, this you can also write as v dot del, where del is the operator given by okay. and v is the velocity vector you know that is u i plus v j plus w k. So, if you clearly make a dot product of these two, you will see that this expression will follow. So, it is a compact vector calculus notation of writing the convective component of the derivative. Okay. So, we have uh, got a picture of what is acceleration of flow, how we describe acceleration of flow in terms of uh, expressions through simple Cartesian notations and maybe also through vector notations. Thank you.